Well, how's it going, Kingsman? Welcome back to the Napoleonic Total War 3 Battlefield. We are already seeing some engagement very early on, and that's because the Ottomans played a guerrilla deployment here. And you can see uh, the French already engaging them. The Ottomans did a very interesting strategy. They had their trenches, they had some vocab. Obviously, they did break the first chess air cheval that went in against them, and there, I think there's artillery hidden here somewhere. Now they also have another crossing they're defending. However, I mean, this one's pretty easy, I feel like. You know, the, the French can just march around it, because you can see the mines as the French. Um, they just kind of march around this side, but the Ottomans obviously are going to try to sell their lives dearly to stop the French from pushing. Now you got to think, you know, what is this whole thing serving? Is it buying them time so they can get the excellent positioning? Because over here, you can see the French are pushing up. Um, dang, where's that artillery from? But anyway, let's look at the points here on the field. Um, and this one has not been screened by me, so I have no idea. I have no idea, um, you know, who, who, if it's a close one or not. But looking at the kills on both sides, it looks pretty juicy. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off of battle results um, and not, you know, spend time screening it. Now, <clears throat> on the French side, of course, we see on the other side, the seven-point Russia Sud. You have a eight-point France Egypt, um, as well as a nine-point France. Oh, wow, they brought one of the custom armies, one of the rare custom armies, Italy. And then, of course, you have a 12-point... Where's the 12-pointer? Yeah, 12 point France, not brought very much just because it is so many points and honestly at 11 point you're, or even a 10 point you can bring almost as much as them. Now on the other side you have a 9 point UK Netherlands, a 9 point Russia Austria, a 9 point Russia and then of course the 9 point Aus, uh, Ottomans. Um, which looks like they are having some more engagement here. And uh, dying quite quickly to some line infantry, they actually march directly into the mines. Come on, France. You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. That was actually not as catastrophic as I thought it would be. Still, unnecessary losses. They could have lost artillery or something, but, you know, it's gone, I guess, now. Oh, come on, don't put your artillery into the stakes, too. This is madness. What are they doing? Oh, my gosh, they're going to kill their artillery. And their general? Come on, France. France, France, France. No. What? What? Is it because it's not horse artillery? I'm very curious now. How did they get through unscathed? How did they get through this? This is madness. Maybe should I spot? No, I'm scared. Okay, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting different. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit too uh, carried away here. Now, of course, we do have the UK up on this hill. They have hordes still is set up. You can see their infantry marching towards the LOC. Ottomans, I don't think, really slowed them down too much. Oh, what about the Scots Grace? Oh, okay. All right, Scots Grays on the field. Okay. Um, also, the uh, Highlanders. And then, of course, they are bringing... Looks like they're bringing a little bit of the UK Prince of Or, the Orange Nassau vibes here. Now, the Russians can bring a lot of horse artillery, or a lot of artillery in general if they really wanted to. Um, you can see a lot of horse artillery here. France getting hit pretty hard. At least their cab and these are really small units that's the one thing when you bring small units of cab guys you gotta be watching out for them one or two shots of artillery or infantry and they are dead dead in the water now we do have the ottomans holding this loc france can have to fight that seven pointer pushing up here it does look like we do have the austria russia who is uh has some cab pushed up as well here more ottomans um, Ottomans, I'm assuming, are going to be spread out throughout the whole field. But, uh, yeah, the French may take this hill. Now, this is a Bohemia 2A, I believe. And uh, we don't see this one too much. But it's kind of cool. You have, like, a nice little slope, usually. Okay, is there a house being fought for? Is that why there's, like, a glitch? 
All right, they did take it from the Ottomans. Ottomans uh, not holding too well. Like I said, I mean, I don't know. I don't like to bring the Ottoman gorillas just because, as a general rule, they are a little bit painful to uh, play. They just die. <laughs> Every once in a while, you can get a really good play. Now, just like there are mortars, and I bet, yep, here it is. The Ottomans brought this huge mortar battery. This thing, let me tell you guys, this can actually get some really nice shot. kills if the French are clustered up or if they bring a lot of cab. Not super accurate, but it can be very deadly. Um, what I was trying this to say before, because I keep, to the enemy. like, I'm, my brain is going like a mile a minute right now trying to think of what, you know, what commentary to say. I, I was saying that the French are kind of spread out over a large area. Now, two of the French armies, 8-point and 12-pointer, are sticking together, along with the other 9-pointer that's pushing up to be with them. And that is very good. I think it's wise to always have allies sticking together. Um, the seven-pointer is off a little bit on their own, and they may be dealing with a nine-pointer, uh, the Russia-Austria, plus a little bit of Austrian, or a little bit of Ottomans, and who knows what else may be on that side. Over here, um, the coalition seems to be sticking together, the nine-point Russia and the nine-point UK at least sticking together, and there's, I'm sure, some Austrian, or some Ottomans, um, mixed in this as well um, and it's always best when you can see when you can stick with your allies and not just go off freelancing on your own that's my opinion you always want to be with your allies support each other oh, in a fight um, and then being able to communicate with the allies it's a huge part of this if you want to be playing these battles guys it's always wisest to stick with your allies and be in a VC with them um, for those who may be newer to the game, that is always what I'd advise. Um, my Discord's not as active as the Lord's is, and I, you know, I usually try to be a little more active, obviously, with having a new baby and all. I've even been making videos that consistently just because I'm tired, guys. You know, having a new baby makes you exhausted, makes you really tired. And uh, then, not only that, on top of that, these videos take so long to process and upload. It literally, like, this probably, I'm recording it today. It probably won't be done until tomorrow because it'll be editing, rendering, and then uploading all of today and all of tonight. It's super frustrating how long it's taken recently. Um, really frustrating, so I apologize for that. Oh, wow. France was going full on. They want to drive the Ottomans off of this hill. But, uh, yeah, it looks like the UK are going to consolidate around this town. Or this small cluster of buildings, I guess more like a manor with a couple like storehouses and peasant village like huts, I guess. Something like that. You know, maybe this is supposed to be representative of uh, a lord with, you know, a rich person with a bunch of huts uh, for all his servants to live in. Who knows? This is Bohemia. You know, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about Bohemia. I really don't. Now, France seems to be taking a very defensive stance here. Let's get some uh, epic shots. We got France, Egypt, very chunky, very large units ranging all the way. Looks like we have some skirmishers, some infantry engaging over there. And the UK actually maybe trying to uh, engage with them here. Fight in the wheat fields. Always so cinematic to see. Oh, we do have some cavalry charging in on the flank. Going for the skirmishers. Chester Cheval trying to maybe compete with that, but. Unfortunately, they will get what they wanted, which was the skirmishers. And it turns into a bit of a, you know, actually, I don't see a lot of cav. This A-point Egypt does not have a lot of cavalry in comparison to the UK. Oh, they already get a beautiful volley, though, but the UK going to get the cavalry out of there. And uh, if I were the UK, I would have pushed up already. They're hiding the town, both sides being a little passive. Um, I don't like passive. That's personal preference, though. That's not something that you have to do. That's just me give my my uh, two cents on the matter. I like to see a UK being. Imagine how if they were aggressive and they pushed out here and they were engaging this line, they would probably start shredding them up. Especially having the cab advantage they have. I um, mean, then Russia pressuring the side. The reinforcements could not shift over to help this flank. They'd have to engage the Russians. Um, you know, that could be a huge win for them. Um, the seven pointer still just pushing up. Doesn't look there's a whole lot happening there. Oh, here come the mortars. Ooh, that was a nice 
summon shot here, hitting some cavalry units. But you see the spread of artillery is actually not that good. And if the French push up close enough, that's mortar will not actually be able to do a whole lot. Now, the artillery that the, the, the Russians have, man, my factions are all screwed up too. Um, they're pushing up. I do love the nine point Russia for this reason. I think they brought, do they bring Prussians? You can bring Prussian light infantry that has like a reload skill. The reload skill, for those who don't know, is like how fast they fire and reload of like 70s. Now, keep in mind, most units are in the 40s and 30s, even 20s for real skill, how fast they can fire. And plus, the accuracy of Prussians is ridiculous. Now, their, mor their morale, not the greatest, maybe. Their melee, not the greatest, but they're meant for shooting, not for melee. In comparison to the guard units you bring with the Russia. Now, you can see that Russia is pushing up to the attack. Hopefully their ally pushes up with them and it's not just Russia going in on their own. Um, Cause France, ooh, actually I hear some nice volleys being exchanged here. Hopefully the UK, the UK can shoot so well guys and hopefully they utilize that so well. Now France is inching forward here. They're going up right against the guns. I wouldn't do this. I would push up this flank here and uh, oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good at all. It does look like the uh, cavalry get caught though by some dragoons and they break, saving the guns. And uh, now France will be able to push up a little bit better. We do see an entire army. Oh my gosh, we have a huge cab charge here. Cavalry guard going against the French, even a flank of Kazakis. And uh, France is actually in a significant amount of trouble with, oh my gosh, that's a lot of cavalry. Now, crosshairs may try. Okay, okay. Russia could be a uh, Russia, Austria could be way neater with their cab, and they wouldn't actually. They're back charging themselves right now. That's actually gonna hurt their own cavalry more than it hurts anything else. They should be pulling troops around and going for the back here. They're just blobbing it all up at once, and that is not gonna actually help. In fact, that's gonna hurt them. Like I said, they should pull out of here, rest up their cab, and then go in again. Um, you know, you, you live, you live and learn. You live and learn. That's probably what's happening here. Um, and that's totally fine. <laughs> Horse artillery. Oh. Canister going in, but the infantry is still going to get a nice charge off. Cavalry also. They're also going to back charge their own infantry as well. And you see that back charge actually hurt that infantry just a little bit. Um, but France is pushing in the center. Things not looking too good. France going to push up. Russia going to have to try to defend in the tree line. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, Russia lost almost all of their cavalry just because they charged it up. You know, it, cav is not that easy to control. I've struggled with cav for a very long time. Um, have a lot of people give some helpful advice and maybe I can... Uh, Maybe I'll do that today. I need to make a guide video on how to use cab. I really do. We need to. Let's see. We'll see if I make it today. We'll see if I can try at least. Now here we go. Looks like the 12 pointer is going to push up. We do have some cavalry charging at Ottoman cab, trying to focus down this French line here. The UK still holding fast their lines. Like they are taking some losses though. Artillery though set up. They do have the town, which is gonna help out quite a bit with their defense. And uh ooh. Oh no, we have some Russian cavalry charging in. This is actually gonna be not good. Hussar is going in, and please tell me this is heavy cav. Oh, dragoons, dragoons! should help a little bit they should crash into this French line with the Russians so close that would really help quite a bit and I just like the seven pointer is gonna push up and just kind of anchor themselves off of this LOC this is a danger in and of itself um, of course they're doing this so they don't get charged in the back but if those troops break they're immediately gonna route off the field and uh, that's no chance of them coming back so I don't know I don't know how smart that is I usually tend to stay away from the, the uh, flanks, the borders, because like I said, you want your troops to have a, a chance of coming back. They will route instantly and that'll be it. You say bye bye to your, your French army. Now 
keep in mind the Scots Grey's still here, but they aren't doing anything yet. Russia still trying to hold this tree line. And uh, France quite honestly do not want to get too aggressive. They probably actually don't want to just because there's French, there's Russian calves sitting here. Now they are pushing up in the tree line. Um, and that's going to force Russia to push back their cavalry. Ottomans still have some calves as well. Um, ooh, we actually have... Wow! The Scots Greys went in unsupported. Eh. That's an expensive unit. That's an expensive unit. It should have pushed up with other calves, with some infantry support at least. Now, they did, of course, break the French, so, you know. Well spent, but still... I would I'd push these Russians up here with the Scots Grace and start smashing this 12-pointer. This 12-pointer is going to start, you know, feeling the wrath of the Scots Grace. Yikes. This 12-pointer is really getting hurt here. Scots Grace doing some work, boys. And there we go, Russia is pushing up, that's beautiful, beautiful, pushing up while they're, you know, starting to break, obviously reserves going up, we have some grenadiers, some squareables, so the Scots Grays can have a bit more work cut out for them, this battle seems to be in full tilt here now, um, so we got, yep, some Russians pushing up these guys, as long as they don't, you know, close up too much on the French, they should be able to shoot them up quite, quite, uh, quite well. Trying to defend that mortar gun artillery piece. Man, I can't talk very well, apparently. Uh, we still have the seven pointer waiting. Nothing really happening there. The full battle happening over on this side. Now, Russia does have light infantry, so very good shooting um, in their lines. So it's not a bad thing that they are actually engaging in a lineup battle. And especially with all these Prussians and guard, they actually will do quite well, I think, against the French, especially with the tree line and all, with the calf support they have. Um, and then, of course, their not-so-good units for shooting are over on this flank, where they're not really engaging as much. So, you know, not a bad thing. In fact, this guy should be going for melee. The UK are gonna probably cut very even with the Egypt, just because Egypt has such a large units. Um, this battle will be very, very equal. And we do have a cab charge, and they caught Egypt out of square formation. Now, Dragoon support, but still, that's not good. They just keep dying to cab charges. The UK are getting away with too much, in my opinion. And uh, Egypt is going to need to start being more active with their cavalry. This whole center is still looking a little iffy. That cavalry always threatening to play. They do have a square pushed up now, so, you know, a little safer for them. They are still pushing up on that flank. Over on this side, the Ottomans and the Austrian-Russian army pushing up here. A lot of skirmishers. This seven-pointer, they are in a bit of a trap. In fact, I would be, I am more concerned about their welfare. Um, let's see how many, there's some Austrians in this army. Actually, quite a bit of Austria. So, some good shooting. They can keep the seven-pointer at bay long enough. They can start shredding up. This is not good infantry. It's a lot of it, but it's not that good. So, this once again, this fight may be an even one as well. But either way, this fight on the flank is going to be inconsequential. Oh, my, my cursor. I realize my cursor is still uh, turned off. Yeah, you can't see my mouse at all. I'm sorry about that, but, you know, you don't need to see it, I guess. <laughs> yep, here we go. The Scots Grays are going to go in this time. They're probably going to hit a square and rip the Scots Grays. That's probably it for them. Yeah, they're probably about to break. It's unfortunate. Oh, my gosh. Artillery, though, tearing into this French line. The French would be very, very careful here. And you can see they've actually... They're actually losing. At least in the center, they've taken some heavy losses, and they're going up against light infantry. Gosh, you hear those rolling volleys. We have a huge cav engagement here. Heavy cav and dragoons. 
Carabiners taking on Russian cavalry. It's anyone's guess who could win here. This is a pretty even fight. So far, no one seems to be getting edge, and actually Russia has some reinforcing cavalry push up. Now, look at these volleys. In fact, even look at this Russian guard. They are gonna hold, guys. They're gonna hold for a very long time. A huge unit. These guys can take on several units of French at once. This artillery from the UK is tearing holes in this 12 pointers line. Over here, the UK is shredding up the French bit by bit, piece by piece, but they are losing in this line fight right here. Now on the far flank, We have artillery up in the front lines here, and uh, it, it is a howitzer, I believe, a howitzer shooting. They should be doing canister at this point. Um, the Ottomans are just holding their ground. They are letting the artillery do the work for them, and uh, letting skirmishers, I'm sure. They have a lot of tanky units here for the Ottomans. You, know, you can see the UK are starting to get totally surrounded, um, and they're starting to break. They are starting to break a little bit. Like I said, Egypt just has such large units, they probably can take this fight. It was a wise choice for Egypt to take on the UK. Ooh, some loud volleys. Um, Egypt taking on the UK, a very wise choice. And you can see the units are getting pretty depleted, but still, they have more troops than the UK do. Um, this cab fight on the flank looking to maybe be a French victory, but at what cost? Their units are probably exhausted. And they will not be able to really help out against the Russians. I don't know why they're forming square here. They don't need to do this. There's no cav threat here. In fact, they're just losing a lot of their firepower here. Do we have a cav charge? Yes, we do have a cav going in, but the Ottomans or the Austrians are able to form square, so that Chasseur Cheval unit has broken. Good thing to kind of uh, view the seven pointer as a lot of you will try to uh, make the seven pointer turn into like a ten pointer or an eight pointer or a nine pointer that doesn't really happen oh my gosh we have a uh, definitely a UK break here as they're getting totally surrounded what I was saying is they have cheap units they have a lot so don't get fooled by the fact that the seven pointer has a lot of troops and you can definitely overwhelm the enemy but it's 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 a lot of cheap units, so if you don't play it right, you are just going to lose a lot of units quickly. And uh, that's a 7-pointer for you. It is a low pointer, which means it's not that strong. Now, over here, France just needs to take a break, which is actually what they're doing. The forest fight, they're not going to win this. Our men are running, sir. Um, you can see Ottomans actually going in for the LOC, and uh, the 7-pointer is starting to maybe fall back here against this pressure. Even if they lose, they have taken up a nine pointer you know while their ally over here is just pounding away at the coalition and they're taking out a nine pointer as the UK definitely getting charged on several flanks here several different fronts And all that's left is an LOC and one or two pockets of reinforcements left. And it is just up to the Russians, basically. The Russians and the Austrian Russians to make this stand. Yeah, France can take a break. They can wait this out. And like I said, guys, this is this is just, you know, my opinion, but a lot of people just are so passive. And there are times to be passive. Like, this 7-pointer, actually, it'd be wise for them to be a little more defensive. They are under outnumbered. Um, the Coalition, obviously, once they saw they were starting to lose here, they had to make a play, and the I don't think they did. They just kind of kept hoping that something would change, being just defensive. Um, 
and in this area of the forest, being defensive actually was hurting the Imperials, so that was good, but this UK should have, if they saw they were losing, they should have just fallen back. Uh, something that even I have fallen for, and that is holding by your guns. They had guns here, and so the UK stuck it out, even though they were getting totally surrounded. Sometimes you just gotta cut your losses and leave your guns. Fall back away from your guns to save your army. Because now this this France is able to push up and push on the Russians who are now gonna be 2v1. Over on this side, you can see still with so many units on the field, the seven points here is gonna hold. Being defensive, obviously working out quite well for them. I think it may have done better if the Ottomans had a little bit more of a fighting force. Um, it seems like their own only real standing army was here and they have a bunch of guerrilla units, but I don't see a whole lot over here. And I think the coalition could have afforded to have a little bit more troops on the field. Imagine if they had one more beefy, chunky unit or faction over here. That probably would have changed the whole course of the battle, having one more to help support the UK. The Ottomans are fun to play, but in this... In this event, I don't think they've done a whole lot. In fact, I'm going to guess here that they got the least amount of kills All on the entire running, uh, team. <laughs> on both sides, in fact. I would say they probably got the least amount of kills. But we, we can take a look. I'm not saying Ottomans are not fun to play and aren't good, but they usually aren't that effective unless they bring a lot of cab and just overwhelm the enemy. You can see they broke in kind here. It just, it's just... I don't care to play off audience. They're more of just for the fun, but I think their cav is really what you want to hit for the Ottomans. Our men are running. Cav overwhelming is uh, a viable tactic. Now it is annoying, and it's kind of boring, and uh, honestly, anybody that just goes Mameluke Ottomans every game, Usually that just that just gets kind of boring. Match going up against the same person over and over, and all they do is bring a huge Mameluke or Ottoman Cav swarm. It's like you know, it's like it's like playing Total War Attila and just having the Huns fight you, just tons of bow archers. It's like it gets old, and just kind of gets annoying. And then it's like, okay, well you know, yeah, of course you can't do anything against it. Play something else so we can have an interesting game for once. I mean, this Ottoman player obviously did not do that, uh, which gives a very obvious challenge. Holy cow, they are. I'm not sure what they're shooting at right now. But, yeah. The beauty of NTW3, guys, is that each battle can be a little bit different. Now, oh my, what is going on? There's so many Ottomans sitting back here. What are they doing? These Ottomans could definitely have been reinforcing something. I was just saying how they didn't have enough. I am very confused now. As to why there's this huge reserve Ottoman army that was just sitting here, not helping out against the Seven Pointer or helping out over here. Oh well. Oh well. You know. It, it, it is a lot to uh, deal with. You know, and you have a lot of troops on the field. It is a lot to try and uh, task. And who knows, you know, how new any of these players are. If you watch my old streams, NGW3 streams, you'll see I definitely did not multitask very well. And I left a lot of troops, forgot troops, troops standing, facing nothing. Everyone has different levels of player experience. So I don't want to talk bad about anyone. You know, each one's journey is uh, different, and each one's journey may be further along or less further along than others. Now, the Ottomans are actually dying here just because the Polish or the uh, French have a forest they're fighting through, which actually gives them some bullet protection. Um, All men are running, sir. Where's the coalition standing in a field? I don't know where the nine point Russia went, but they are probably running away out of this tree line. Maybe they're going to make it out into an open field, but at this point, the battle is basically over. The only fight happening way over here. Sorry guys, it's not really the uh, epic, fast-paced battle. This is probably more of a just line volley fire, which, you know, it happens. It happened. It happens. It happens. Both sides aren't going to give up very easily.
Watch, you try to resist the urge to like hide behind this log. One thing I'll say with the Russia Austria build is you can build it so that you can shoot, but you also can build it so that you get some melee. Now, of course, they had heavy cav, but you saw them kind of, they all died unfortunately in the beginning, because otherwise they probably could have really hurt this seven pointer. Using some Russian infantry with some heavy cav, smashing in. I mean, I think I showed some videos where I talk about the build. Yeah, I definitely, I know I talked about like how to build in Russia um, for different things. Um, building a Russia for melee is my favorite thing to do. That's why I love Russia so much. Now you can see actually Seven Pointer is losing here. And uh, there's nothing really happening there that's kind of marching over here. So this is the only fight that's really happening. I mean, I mean it's, it's just line fight. I may fast forward just a little bit here just so we don't, you know, bore you guys to death. Now the Ottomans could have been pushing up and I think they actually are. They could be pushing up and hitting the melee on this flank. I'm surprised they haven't tried pushing the up fatigued, using this LOC to uh, push up on that flank. We do have what looks like the rest of Russia maybe trying to reunite with their allies. So that was actually a smart move on their part. Um, trying to push over to their ally, uh, maybe fight together. That is a very wise strategy. I'm actually happy to see they were, you know, thinking ahead there. Um, but unfortunately, France may be catching them. Russia's pretty slow compared to the L4s of France. You see, the French have caught them out in the open, and the Russians are trying to hold like a rear guard action, but France is just going to be un. They will not be denied. The Ottomans should be pushing, in my opinion. They should be pushing up a ton of infantry, starting to try to mass break, trying to spare as much of this nine-pointer as they can by going for melee. Go for the melee. At this point, these guys probably are winded, probably tired, they've been fighting for a long time. Don't be afraid to be more aggressive, but here's what I'm saying. These guys are going to break and immediately disappear, and you're never going to get them back. Um, I'm just going to keep fast-forwarding here. Uh, Seven-pointer is still going to mass route. Um... We'll see if this nine pointer can get away without losing too many men. I don't know though; it doesn't look too good. Now, hopefully, the Ottomans over here are pushing up and not sitting a bunch of troops in the back still, so they can kind of maybe save some of their army for the fight that is to come. But it looks like they are finally pushing up a lot of troops here. But they're going for a shooting. They're going for a shooting kind of thing, which at this point the seven pointer is finally dying. But I would say the seven pointer actually has done quite well. They have delayed two nine-pointers, basically. There's two nine-pointers over here, guys, on a seven-pointer. That actually may be the greatest delay and greatest waste of enemy's time ever. They have pulled so many resources, and they are just now dying when the French have definitely won on this side. So if anything, I'd say the seven-pointer MVP. I would say they did a very good job of wasting the Coalition's time. And uh, it worked so well. And just now, the Ottomans are getting very aggressive here. And just now, you will see the seven-pointer break. And the Ottomans are still on the field, and they are very, very dangerous. Um, I'm going to fast forward here because Russia is still trying to retreat. They're getting caught, though, by the French. And just slowly but surely defeated in detail. They still have a Dragoon unit, I believe. Oh, no, that's a cross the air. Okay, they have a cross the air unit with uh, the rest of their infantry, so they're going to push up here, and hopefully we will see we will see the coalition push up to defend and help out their, their uh, ally. However, there is still 27 minutes remaining, and LLC could still be a viable choice here, I guess you'd say. Um, the French have LLC victory at this point. There is a four-pointer, which the coalition has, but the rest of the LLCs are controlled by the French. We finally have the Ottomans pushing up their reserve line that was kind of sitting there. 
Um, so hopefully they can uh, get some kills. I still think, unless something changes for the Ottomans, they probably aren't going to have a whole lot of kills. They're going to be... Yeah, they're, they're, they're not the greatest troops. And these poor two French mids are kind of stuck out, getting surrounded by the French. Oh, actually, we have some... Uh, some cav engagement going in here. Oh, these cavalry units. Yeah, we do have the artillery pushing up and hopefully some reinforcements from the coalition. But like I said, this this nine pointer depleted, exhausted, I'm sure. Not be that easy. I would try resting them up a little bit. Just shooting and all that does make them tired. But France is going to have to deal with that artillery. They have artillery of their own, which is set up in a beautiful position to be able to chew up this 9-pointer. I'd be hitting... Look how small these units are. This is going to be a nice target to hit. And I would keep focusing down that 9-point Russia. See if we can't knock them off the field and then swing around the flank. But France has a lot of troops left. Actually, well, I guess they don't have a lot of troops left. Yeah, they actually don't have a lot of troops left. The Ottomans have the most on the field, and they're pushing up, finally to engage. They got a tank. They got a tank hard. France needs to get some cabin gear to defeat the final, you know, final remnants, and I don't think they have a whole lot. They have some dragoons way over here. They have units going to LOCs. They are going to have to hit this line hard, get a shock. Because the Ottomans have cavalry still. This guard, though, guys, look at this guard tanking so much fire. Always love the Russian guard. It looks so gorgeous. Still have this heavy cap too. But here we go. France. I, I don't think France will lose this. They have artillery support. They have infantry in a good position. Russia is a little bloodied. And you can see the Ottomans. Well, they're... Oh, here we go. Can they form a square? Russia is doing the smart thing. They're going into the tree line, trying to eat away at the flank. Let the Ottomans do a little bit more, but oh my gosh! Okay, the Ottomans are mass routing now. That's it for them. That's unfortunate. The whole center broke. They, like, we have to just have some good firing here from the French. And they are just racking up the kills here. Once again, the odds tipping back into the favor of the French for this last and final stand. You have a nine-pointer here on the side. Man, I can't believe it's battle. He's actually lasted this long. I guess mostly the reason it's lasted so long is because they had a march over the buildings, huh? other side. But they are going for some LOCs just in case. They have both one-pointers. Um, there's a four-pointer way over here. They haven't actually gone for it. I'm assuming they think they can take this four-pointer. We have cavalry now charging. Oh, oh my gosh, really? Don't charge them all the way over there. You you want to like walk it closer. French are gonna see this from uh, so far away. Like the French were able to see this. They're in a form of square. This Ottoman player is 
They would have done better to have the cab push around. In fact, it would have been even better to have the cab shift around and help support a side here, a flank. And that was, I believe, the Ottoman general. He used to do unit. And just like that, he's going to run away. Yeah. You know, some battles have better skill players than others, and that's totally fine. I, I think anybody that plays this mod um, deserves props, because this is a very tough mod to play. It is a lot of fun, obviously. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's very rewarding in its own way. But it is a challenge, to be sure. So anyone that tries their hand at playing such a complicated, tough mod should, you know, get props for even, you know, play, in my opinion. Um, and obviously, it's a learning curve. It's a huge learning curve. You gotta play a lot, I feel like, to even learn how to play well. Um, and, uh, you know... I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to be, uh, some people said before, like, yeah, maybe don't tear into people too much when they don't play well. And, you know, I take, a, I try to take constructive criticism well and uh, try not to sound too salty or too... All men are running, sir. Yeah, because we don't, don't play terribly. I don't think you want to play too terribly. You know, some people didn't, you know, there's always improvement. Anybody can. Um, I think the things to improve from this game. You know, what what went wrong? That's what I like to do in these battles. I think it was... I think the Coalition focused too much on a 7-pointer. You know, and maybe they didn't know it was a 7-pointer. Maybe they thought it was a bigger army because it did look like a huge army. Um, that just comes with time, knowing, you know, the different flags, basically. They focused way too much on the 7-pointer instead of maybe... I think the Ottomans could have soaked up the 7-pointer's time in the 9-point Russia. Austria could have rolled over here, especially when the French were pushing on the 9-pointer match if they rolled up this road and smashed into the flank using that heavy cab, using the Russian infantry. You know, who knows if these were all randoms not really communicating. It's a little harder when no one's talking to the others because you get tunnel vision. I've done it. Any battle I play, I usually get a lot of tunnel vision. And I don't look at the rest of the field. I try to, but it's really hard to actually focus on their side of the field. So, if anything, I think just a little more awareness in the map, which, you know, we all could learn from. I could learn from that as well. Um, I think the Ottomans were a little... They were, they were dealing so much with this, I think they forgot their reserves. And maybe that could have helped, even pushing the reserves over to ease off some of the pressure from the 9-pointer. They were winning this fight, but the UK definitely died, and that definitely did not help their case whatsoever to get focused down by the French. Um, I'm going to skip ahead. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of fighting left. It's just Cav running down some troops. Uh, unless something changes, I'll skip to the results at the end. All right, guys. So here we see the Egypt got some really good kills, especially with the cavalry. Uh, Egypt's a fun faction to play because you can see all these massive units. They got some very chunky units. They aren't the necessarily the almost amazing stats of units, but they have very decent stats, and then they have, you know, the mass to back it up. But here, let's pull up the results here. So you see the seven-pointer <laughs> delayed the enemy, had the largest army on the field, um, I think did a very good job of uh, delaying two nine-pointers, basically. Got 12-24 for the kills, too, to show for it. Uh, you have the Egypt with 11.07, another 9-pointer, France with 12.76, and the 12-pointer with 12.92. So they all got a lot of kills. Other side, you have the UK, you see 12.07, they definitely, you know, killed quite a few troops. Um, the 9-point Russia-Austria engaging that, uh, you know, 7-pointer got 9.18. You have the 9-point Russia with 10.32, then you have the Austria, or not the Austria, the Ottomans with 6.98. So... Um, yeah, that'll be the battle, guys, today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for joining me. You guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, and I will catch you all in another video.